Last week on Pete's PA, Pete was furious as the PAs made a huge fashion faux pas. Fucking mortified. And if I'd have said what I thought, they wouldn't even be standing here. They'd have turned to ash. There was a clash of personalities as Damon confronted SJ. I'm upset that I don't like you. It's all my time. And it was tears of sadness at the second elimination. Debbie, you're not going to be my PA. I don't cry. Don't cry. Let me cry. <laughs> It's morning in the house, and some of our potential PAs are still coming to terms with Debbie's elimination. It was a shame Debbie getting eliminated, it really was. You know, Debbie's a really, really lovely woman, and maybe her downfall was just being a bit too nice. I got close to Debbie, because we shared a room, um, and we spoke quite a lot. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, quite hard when she went, but... It's week three in the house, and with APAs remaining, it's up to Pete's advisor, business psychologist Rob Young, to begin this week's task. As a PA, you, one of the skills you need is to be super organized, and this is especially true of working with Pete. He's someone who, by his own admission, you know, never turns up on time. I'm ready when I'm ready. His house is a mess, doesn't know what's going on, so you've really got to compensate for him and organize his life for him as well as your own. So, to introduce a task today, I've brought in an expert on time management, Catherine Nicholson. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all. Okay, as Rob said, if you want to be able to organise Pete, you absolutely have to be able to organise yourselves. And one way of finding out how well organised you are on a personal level is by looking at your rooms and how you keep them. I was a bit anxious when Catherine said she was going to go for our bedrooms because I basically got up this morning and everything was just thrown everywhere. My makeup was in the bathroom. I think I left a few pairs of pants over the bed. All of the candidates' luggage will be checked through by organisational expert Catherine to see whose luggage is a mess and see whose luggage is completely organised. And I think that will give a very good view on what kind of people they are. You know you can always tell a bitch by a handbag. First to come under Catherine's scrutiny are Natalie, SJ and Denise. Gosh, you can almost smell the oestrogen in this room. <laughs> it's definitely a girl's room. Just noticed there's some, some grot on the floor here. Yeah. There's a, a label. Here, to the bin, <laughs> it's not that far. Can we just flip this open? <gasps> No, my two hands away. <laughs> okay, so enough of the excuses. What are you going to do about this? Uh, probably empty my case in an orderly manner. Should we have a look at your two beds? That towel behind you. Please tell me it's dry. It should be dry. Um, and yes, it shouldn't be on my bed. But I will say, in my suitcase, everything is ironed and laid out, and I've got tissue in between everything. So I, um, I have put some things in the drawers. So, SJ, tell me about your situation. Okay, well, that's my most um, precious item, so I've kept that hung. And I've got my boots vaguely laid out there, and then it's my coat on the top. At least you've got some organisation there. You know where things are. I think the, the most, most organised person, person is Denise. Denise, I think. And then perhaps Natalie needs to try harder. Yeah, OK. Hey, I get that. Next for inspection is Ian and Damon's room. Are the boys more organised than the girls? This is very obviously the boys' room. I'm not really sure I want to touch this, but sort of a couple of items underwear. They are yep. clean. <laughs> they are clean. So a pair of shorts turned inside out. That was, uh, they have been washed. <laughs> They're just hung on the... Uh, I like the hang on though. They were on here, but it's just... Because that's so much better. <laughs> Whose suitcase is this? That's mine. It's packed because after the first elimination, where I was up for elimination, I didn't necessarily unpack again just because it's such a bitch to get it all back in again. Where are the rest of your clothes in? Um, in my suitcase. This is all your gear? So you've had this on already? Yeah. Did you iron it before you wore it? Yes, I did. And now you're going to have to iron it again? Yeah. Is that a good use of your time? No, it's not. There's a hanger. Thank you. Watch. <laughs> There we go. Uh, that's not a true reflection of myself because at home and everything I am quite organised but in the house I was a little bit untidy. 
Finally, Rhea, Nikki and Shelly are up for inspection. Rhea, can you just bend down and pick something off the floor there? That yeah, I I'm so completely guilty. I was reading a book and eating a packet of crisps this morning. But it was typical because I had just been on the bed eating a packet of crisps and reading a book before I'd been cooled down and didn't tidy up after myself. If the bin's full, what do we do? There's no excuse. I mean, Shelly, by your own admission, doesn't do cleaning and I don't even think she knows how to either. Okay, I'm just going to have a look at this over here. Wow! Rob, I think you'll be impressed with this. Blimey, everything hung up, everything stacked below. Actually, just grab that bottle of water behind you. There's one here, there's Is one here. Right? There's another bottle over there. There's another bottle on the bed. There are some downsides to this room. The crisp yeah. packet, the water bottles. Being an organised person isn't about being anal. It's not about having every single thing mm. exactly where it should mm -hmm. be. Yeah. What I really like about this room is it's a ready-to-go room. Yeah. I like the idea that you can come in, you know where your bag is. It's yeah. all there. The things that you yeah. need are where you need to have them. And I think that's a great thing. I am glad that we got the better room because the other two were disastrous. And so <laughs> if they just said mine was worse, I'd have been mortified. We got points back for having a lovely tidy wardrobe and just generally not being too as messy as the boys actually. <laughs> The perfect PA, they've got to be completely on top of their time management. That's what a PA's job is. They've got to control their own time and Pete's time. They haven't got time to re-iron a shirt. They haven't got time to pick up a piece of paper that should have been in the bin in the first place. And so all those small things, if they're not picking up on the small aspects of their time management, the ramifications could be huge. Having exposed the PA's dirty laundry, Rob and Catherine want to test how the candidates manage time when working in teams. Okay, to be a perfect PA for Pete, it's really essential that you can think on your feet when the pressure's on, you can apply yourself in a practical sense and also be very creative in how you overcome challenges that will be thrown at you. Okay, so we need to split you into two teams. So can I ask SJ, Rhea, Damon and Denise, can you come over here please? You're going to be a team. Which leaves Shelley, Ian, Natalie and Nikki, if you can yep. come here, you're a team. Okay? The group I've got for the challenge, I'm happy with that. I think both teams are fair to be honest. It'll be interesting to see how Nikki works with us because I think we're slightly more passive members of the household. I would rather not work with Natalie today only for the fact that I know that she's very, very unmotivated. I was a bit like being you know, thrown to the lion's den, I felt a little bit. But you know what? It, fine. Take it, bring it on. Did Pete achieve on Celebrity Big Brother? Oh, uh, second. I get the feeling they're probably seeing us, seeing us more as competition yeah. than just fodder. Time management expert Catherine Nicholson has split the group into two teams, one headed by Damon, the other by Ian. Okay, welcome to the box. How are you feeling? Good. Very excited. Are you raring to go? Yes. yes. Let me tell you about the box. In this exercise, the teams are really up against time. They've got far more tasks to achieve than they could possibly do. I'm looking for a practical approach. I'm looking for quick thinking. Okay, best of luck. Your 30 minutes starts now. Also, how they think clearly under pressure. That's something that a PA really needs to be able to do. All right, let's go. Okay, you want to get to the back of the box, everyone, and spread it out. The task was we had a box, and inside the box was a whole series of instructions. Various tasks, kind of intelligence, um, practical, organisational, and you had to do them by certain, you know, kind of prioritise them. Nominate a team vocalist. Yeah. You must sing, you spin me round Fabulous. from start to finish in an opera singer style. In a, in a style of rap, rap, yeah. yeah. I knew the words to use to be around, I knew the tune, so I could definitely blag it. <laughs> so. All I know is that to me, you look like you are lots of fun. I got to be your friend, <laughs> Shelly sounded really good, to be fair. Oh, I think my pitch was a little bit too high, to be honest. <laughs> Damon was the strongest for the box challenge. He had the most 
difficult thing to do, I think. Yeah. Pete wants something wacky and original to wear to a celeb bash tonight. Customised t-shirt for Pete. Ah, 300. I'll do that. Damon stood out big time. He threw himself into the whole task. Um, he didn't seem to get pressured at all. In fact, he thrived on it. He almost enjoyed that that pressure that was on him. Perfect. Yeah, you're going to do a billboard, so you'll need, you'll need oh, that. Yeah. So well, I'll have to wait for... Um, no, rip, rip a sheet off. You don't have to rip a sheet off. Go for it. Team two, no question, it was Nikki. Very much in control, quite bossy, articulate, enthusiastic. Answer the questions on the close quiz, touch it up. Okay, go. Nikki was pushy, but she wants results. She wants to win. Okay. Remember, guys, you've got to stay quiet for three minutes at 20 minutes. Nikki is quite overpowering, um, and in a few dark tasks, she did sort of take over. Okay, it's okay. so time to quiz. So you've got one minute to answer as many questions about Pete as you can. So first question, what was Pete's first job? Uh, hairdresser? Hairdresser. What's the name of the drummer in Dead or Alive? Ah, Steve Cox, is it? Steve Coy? Steve Coy, well, he was. What position did Pete achieve on Celebrity Big Brother? Oh, uh, second? No? Uh, fifth. Well done. Third. Now, complete the quote made by Pete. In 1989, I went on a long journey and found... Myself. Myself? What is the nationality of Pete's mother? German. A German... But, but, but German, German. What year did you spin me reach number one? Oh, uh, 82. Oh. 83, of course. It was released in 84, but it reached number one in 85. I'm impressed. The box challenge is obviously devised to see how well you work within a team and how you participate and your creativity and all that. But for me, it just conjured up images of Blue Peter and sticky back plastic. Oh my God, I can't do that. Slight concerns about Natalie. She started off, I wouldn't say negative, but quite self-deprecating. And I really want to see more confidence come from her and more positivity. Steve Martin, man two brains. Oh, really? Oh. Uh, I don't think I did very well at all. I just didn't shine, I didn't prove myself, I didn't, didn't show any of my capabilities or skills. It was a bit of a relief to um, take a bit of a you know, back seat because I've kind of had leadership roles twice in a row. Are you doing a test for Lily? Yes. I don't even know what Lily is, but yeah, I am. But I think what happened is we quite naturally slipped into our own areas. I'm really creative, so I was kind of off making random objects out of bits of crepe paper and stuff. I thought we were just putting everything back in the box. We don't have any access to it. Okay, let's stop it there. Okay, I'd like to see some of the designs that you've created, please. It's actually dual purpose. You can wear it as fabulous chubka, or you can go Lady Di styling. Oh, that's and very then, good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember saying, oh yeah, they're really good. And then afterwards I was like, oh, they're bloody awful. <laughs> Try to be creative, but um, the quality was quite poor. I mean, the owl, I just stuck like a ball on a piece of paper with two feathers hanging off its head, so it wasn't nothing spectacular. We were all crap. I mean, hands up. We really were <laughs> So Ian's team put quantity over quality in the box challenge. But what does Catherine think about Damon's approach? They stood out because of the quality that they brought to the tasks that they did. They put a lot of effort and thought into them. They thought about the outcome of what they were achieving. And they thought about how Pete might respond. They really put themselves in Pete's shoes. Damon's enthusiasm and attention to detail has tipped the balance in their favour. It's now up to Ian to lift his team in the second part of the challenge. Welcome to the drain pipe challenge. At the bottom of that drain pipe, there are three ping pong balls. The more ping pong balls you retrieve within that 15 minutes, and by retrieve I mean into your hands, the more points that you will score. The teams have to retrieve these balls using two pieces of guttering, four sticks, and a bucket and a half of water. And they must remain outside the boundary. This is really about problem solving again under a time pressured situation. I've actually done this task with children, so it's very doable. Okay, so one of these has got to be used to retrieve ping pong ball. There's holes in the pipe. Oh, well, that's a pisser, isn't it? But it's all right, we're not losing too much. Okay, like, put the sticks in the pipe. Oh, ah, are the sticks are the good are the holes big enough for the spikes? In the drain pipe challenge, SJ really came into her own. She had some great ideas, she was extremely creative. She came up with some ideas that I've never seen anybody do in that challenge. I had a slight mental advantage that I just managed to find a trick with the two wigs. Any holes your side? No. Okay, no more. There is one, one lower down. We're going to have to make a, does this something? Make Ian really shone, extremely enthusiastic. He had some great ideas. I thought, actually, I'm the man in the group 
this is a physical sort of thing I need to push forward. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh just keep going, keep going. Oh, Ian, water kept like, going down into his face and then all of a sudden it started pouring back out and he couldn't understand why it was pouring back out the other side but he hadn't, oh god it was disastrous. Oh, that was all over me, that's <laughs> We worked together very good as a team, we, we had, it, had cord, coordination quite well even though I thought went, went through a bucket. Oh, wow, nice! We don't need to worry, I can reach, I can reach. Sorry, that's it, they're coming, they're coming, keep yeah. going, that's it, that's it. You got them? Yeah, one more, one more, there, one more, there, one more, keep going, keep pushing. Oh. Yeah! Oh. oh well, I ran out of water, guys, sorry. Go, go, go. Go on, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, get it, get it, yay! yay. <laughs> I've got a stitch! <laughs> you did really well holding that. That's good. good. Everyone worked really well, even though I could feel the girls' arms getting heavier, pushing that in when oh, that was done. I could just feel their arms getting heavier. It was oh, about, Ian got a bit wet as well. Carrying on doing it, so it was really good. Now it's up to me to decide who I feel have been the, the strongest characters today. And I've looked at it purely from an organisation and time management perspective, because that was my role here today. And the one that stood out for me from Team One is you, Damien. Thank you. Well done. Yeah, that's good. That's <laughs> and from team two, the person that really stood out for me, it was you, Ian. Well done. I think like a lot of the girls like do see us a bit weaker. Possibly, yeah. They? But I think they they do think. I think their ideas are changing. They're also. changing, yeah, definitely. I, think they, I, think I mean, I'm, I feel more confident with doing sort of everything at the moment. I'm feeling more and more confident, which the, is good. I get the feeling they're probably seeing us seeing us more as competition, yeah, than just fodder. Pete's trusty advisors, Rob and Donna, have gathered the PAs together to brief them on this week's time management task. Rob and Donna gave us um, the challenge and it was to go and get us a series of items for Pete Burns that he needed for that evening. You'll need to collect two monogrammed bathrobes for Pete and Michael, 50 orange roses, vanilla scented candles, something red for Michael because it's their anniversary, and some special foundation for Pete. We were given three hours to do it and only £150 to do it with. It was me and Damon that were the team leaders. And we were quite happy at that. We were thinking the two blokes, sort of team leaders, shows the girls a bit, you know, we're still here. Now, we're going to pick the teams in a slightly different way today. So rather than picking who you do want for your team, you're going to pick who you don't want for your team. So Ian, if you'd like to start. Uh, I will choose, sorry, Nikki. My first choice will be SJ. Sorry, Shelley. A little bit disappointed with Ian. Um, did question him after why he said that, and he just said, oh, I haven't worked with you before, so I don't know what you're like. I don't particularly get on with Shelley, really. I, we, uh, I don't know, there's something there that we just don't work together, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, no, Rhea. Natalie, I'm afraid. It was really good actually not to hear my name being picked because I think they kind of, both lads, both leaders saw me as quite an organised person. Okay guys, do you want to get into your teams? But as it happens, it didn't work out so well for the boys because the twist was the people they didn't want were the people they got. Damon and Ian, would you like to swap places? <laughs> I just thought, oh bloody hell. Uh, now I've got Nikki again <laughs> and Shelley. I should have seen it coming, but I didn't. The winning team will be decided by Pete himself, based not only on the time that you achieve, but also on the quality of the items that you bring back. I think the twist in team leaders is really fun, because obviously they all know that Ian didn't want them on his team anyway, and uh, he did have to explain why, because there are some strong personalities in there. To me, appearance is everything. I really don't care about food, I don't care about flowers. Can I really, really kiss their ass? Just, let's just get in. Just, yeah. just get in that. Right, okay. I can be a really fussy bitch, and I think this is a really tough challenge for them. The PAs have been split into two teams and given three hours and £150 to complete this week's time management task. This task is about each team going out and getting a precise list of items on a very limited budget in a very limited time span. I want all of those items to be the best possible quality because I could be a really fussy bitch and I think this is a really tough challenge for them. 
The teams need to acquire two monogram bathrobes, 50 orange roses, vanilla scented candles, something red for Michael, and a foundation makeup for Pete. Okay, so the first one we're going for, we're going for a dressing gown. Right. We don't have to pay for that. Yeah. Just picking it up. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that is the first one. That is on Wardour Street because I'm the team leader. Um, you know, they are just going to have to listen to me, I'm afraid. Do you want me to be in charge of the phone, someone? Can you blag? Yeah. I'll blag on the phone. Right, so this one, so are, we all, are, we all happy, are we all happy with this mm. first one? Yeah. Let me check the pen here. <laughs> Damon, so far, I'm not seeing him take charge of his group at all. The girls are really on top of him. Poor guy. 50 orange roses. I'm going to blag those from the florist that I know. Well, we're going yeah, yeah. to try and black them. Yeah, can, I, can I just say something? Yeah, I'm just yeah, going to yeah. work yeah. out like a logical plan. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. actually. If, you want to, if you're happy doing that. that. We have three hours for this task. Um, it is possible. It will be the shopping trip from hell. Got a structure. You know what we're doing. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Shall I make a call to the pink yeah, florist to see if they've got any yeah, roses? Yeah. Yeah. Phony, 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 phony. Phony. I'm looking 50 orange roses and I just wanted to see how much they would be. 55, oh, 350 per step. Shelley was making phone calls, uh, trying to organise flowers. We couldn't get all the 50 roses in one place. Is there any way you could slightly make that a little bit cheaper, please? Because we've only we've got a certain budget. So I had Nikki in my ear, like, you know, just like shouting in my ear. And to be honest, like, it was good because she was giving me pointers, but I couldn't hear the, the other people on the other side of the phone, which was really, really sort of getting on my nerves a little bit. You know, just anything that you can do just to make it look extra special because it's a unique opportunity for yourselves. Having called the majority of florists in West London, Shelley has sourced the 50 orange roses from three different shops. However, it seems that Damon's team are closing a deal with one call in one store. We'll just have the, well, the 50 flowers and the 50 roses at, was it £1.50? That's brilliant. I was able to sort of um, pick myself up from yesterday and actually shine through a bit more today. Right, first of all we need to go to Tottenham Court Road because that's where we're going for the candles and there's quite a lot of other stuff around there as well. But because SJ knows London better than I do, I'm going to pass over to her. I'm not going to go try and direct around London when there's somebody in the front who actually lives in London. It's a very, very straight run from King's Cross down the Euston Road down to Tottenham Court Road. Um, All right. Okay. Donnie, he has to turn into Gower Street to get into Tottenham Court Road. No, he doesn't. Is that going to go across there? No, you can't. In a car. I don't know. I really know London. Of course, I'm going to explain it to you, but trust me. Okay, we'll give you a call back then, and if you can reserve them for me, that'd be great. I don't want to just Area. jump in and if everyone's That's speaking, the, the girls seem to be doing a good job. So okay, I'll just then, sort thanks of for your help. Just letting them Thank uh, you. know. Thank you. No, I'll thing. just bring them okay, to right, right, Ian's right. team leadership was really good. However, Nikki is so much older, so she's always going to have more to say. So it's Nikki who will be speaking. My store manager. Yes, please. His name's Lauren. Oh, okay, so Nikki will call Lauren. Okay, one of my colleagues, um, <laughs> Nikki, will be coming in to speak to him. She's organising right. the event. Okay, thanks for your help. Thank you, bye. Guys, I can't if you keep shouting. Nikki's got this way of just, you know, being centre of attention. I don't know what the reason for that is. You would be able to sell a lot more and from this programme. And it's pitching. It is a fault of mine <laughs> if I think I can do the job better I just want to get on and do it and it's not only Nikki who thinks she's in charge as the robes are already pre-bought let's see if they've got something deliciously red really Please. vamp it up that's the conflict when you're in a team you have to make team decisions so we've got hi good afternoon um, my name's De um, Denise I'm calling on behalf of Pete Burns Whilst the girls navigate the one-way streets of Soho, Ian bells out in search of the tailors to collect the bathrobes. Hi. Hi, Ian. How do you do? Oh, this is Natalie. That's Peter. Oh, that's Wicked. beautiful. However, a deliberate mistake has gone unnoticed. It's got Peter on it, and it should have Pete on it. And they were supposed to check that. So they might be in trouble when they get back to centre. <laughs> It's 50 minutes into the task, and with the bathrobes collected, Nikki's persistence may have paid off. One of the things that was on the list was a present that had to be read, and it was going to be for Michael from Pete. My immediate thought was, right, let's get on the phone, let's get in touch with Vivian Westwood's store and um, see if we can get something that was quality, because clearly we haven't had quality yesterday. Let's go for the Westwood item, that's no. really good. Yeah, Westwood next. Nikki started getting a bit more forceful and I was getting a bit more stressed because I was a team leader. You know, they were listening to me at the start. But we're going from Conduit Street, we're going straight to 
Davis's Davis. Street, okay? But it's not only Ian with problems. Damon and his team are heading for Meltdown over their first item, the vanilla scented candles. I mean, I think we should get two, whatever, because yeah, it's right, always right. symmetrical. Yeah. Can I, that's yeah. unusual, it's, everybody has them. Can, can I just, can I just say one thing? Is. I think people say that looks like um, a Madeira cake mix-up. I, mean, I don't thinking, agree. You know, we, we have said we'd like them, two, two as a pair. Vanilla candles, how much more basic does it get? And people are starting to get quite bitchy. They're, they're starting to say, I don't agree, and there's a little bit of a hint of spite behind it. So I think especially SJ and Denise, two very strong characters starting to butt heads. The group decision is the group decision. I can't always think, you know, my decision's right, and that's a learning curve. I'm just looking at as if we pick some of the flowers, it's not going to count as anything, so no. we need to get the whole lot. I say the hairiest moments were just, you know, just voices being raised and close proximity. Anyone got my info, please? All right, all right, all right. In a small area, obviously, it's going to get a bit tetchy. We haven't got time to begin our changing things, so it's just westward next. Ian's made a decision, and the next stop is Vivian Westwood. As Nikki goes to choose their second item, something red for Michael, her constant interference seems to be dividing the group. It's Ian who should be leading this team today. We've got a structure. No, we've got the, we should stick to the it. The thing is, the thing is, you can't do more than what I'm doing. I've set the team structure. That's all we need to do. It's one hour and ten minutes into the task, and Damon's now collecting their second item, the monogrammed bathrobes. Yeah. All right, thank Take you care. very much. Bye. Bye. But it seems Damon has missed the deliberate spelling mistake too. Right, OK, listen, the upshot is there's no way we can get any garments or anything like that. The best we can do is get some unisex aftershave, which is normally about 60 quid, for £25. With the London traffic building, Damon's team have resorted to walking, but it's now the map reading and communication that's slowing them down. Team Ian are on a roll as Nikki and Natalie have chosen their second item. This is a um, unisex aftershave, it's a red bottle. I'm a shopaholic and anything to do with shopping, food, alcohol, money, I love. Trying to keep an eye on expenditure, Damon's team go vintage in their quest for Michael's red surprise. I'm liking that a lot, guys, and, what it's, you think? and it's 15 pounds. With an hour and a half remaining, Nikki and Shelley arrive at the first of the three florists to collect 17 of the 50 orange roses. But what are Donna's views at this stage of the game? Well, Natalie's definitely bottom PA because I don't think she's even interested. She's forgotten what she's here for anyway. She's just come for a day out. Um, top PA, I guess Nikki's being assertive, but she's also been irritatingly pushy and over the top, trying to push her way forward. I don't know. I think my money's on Ian at the moment. Kind of quiet, calm, trying to keep it together at the moment. With three items now bagged, Team Damon arrive at one of London's premier cosmetic stores for a pre-arranged appointment. We spoke to your manager and she said that she's already agreed with you that we could have 30% off today. When Shelley and Nikki return to the car, it seems Natalie has run off in search of Pete's makeup. Oh, where is Natalie? Well, Natalie's just done a runner just down the road, she, um, just to check a shop. I knew exactly how important the makeup would be to Pete. Oh, look, if she's back. purchased something, maybe it'll have been a good yeah. gamble. We haven't got anything. We haven't got anything. I really, really kiss their ass. I tried my absolute hardest. They can't budge on any cosmetics. Just, just get in. Yeah. Just, yeah. just get in that. Sorry. Right, okay. Sorry. No, well done, it was, it was, it was, it was a risky thing, but I think you should have come back with the samples and then taken the flight. Well, I just checked to see if you were ready, so I thought, well, she's wrapping the mail. Okay. Rather than get back and you like, start screaming. It's two hours gone, and so far Ian's team have picked up the monogrammed bathrobes, 17 orange rose stems, and something red for Michael. With the clock ticking, the remaining 33 roses need collecting. We've got an hour left now to get back. Um, we've managed to get all the flowers, we haven't got any candles. It's Pete's dinner party, what's a dinner party without candles? Okay, home driver. Denise's earlier blagging skills means Damon's team only need to visit one florist. They now have all five items and are feeling pretty pleased with themselves. Well, you know, crew, how do they feel? Bloody good. I feel all right. With only ten minutes remaining before the three hours are up, Nikki strikes gold in a supermarket. I've got candles too. Oh, oh that's brilliant! brilliant. brilliant. Oh, 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 oh,
So Team Ian head home, but with only four out of the five items. We made a group decision uh, not to pick up the makeup uh, and to get back to the house instead because we thought time was going to be more important. We had all the other things and they were really good quality as well. Really good team effort, even mm. despite the fact that Damon didn't want any of us. I know, he's got such bad taste in women. I know, he really has. Well, I have. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we've actually done all right. And uh, we're going to be home in time. We're going to be home in time as well. So, uh... With five minutes to spare, Ian's team arrive home. But what will Pete and Michael make of their gifts? Okay, roll it all out then, let me see what you got. This was the first item we actually got for you, which was the gowns. Oh, that's interesting. No one ever calls me Peter. <gasps> I know. It's always Pete. And which some other things that you couldn't really. possibly get embroidered on a dressing gown that start with, see you next Tuesday. We managed to get the 50 roses. Okay. Uh, yeah, we I got mean... Well done. One down from £3.50 a stem to £1.95. Meanwhile, the mood has darkened with Damon's team as they realise they are stuck in traffic. But it's just chock a block. Absolutely chocolate. Now, we had to get a gift for you, Michael. So I phoned up Vivian Westwood mm -hmm. and we did get discount. Oh, well, well done. Well done. There you go. Oh, thank and you. you. No, that's absolutely fab. Absolutely well done. Cool. Got some candles in any event. Unfortunately, we didn't get your foundation. We know how important it is. And as we thought it was a dinner party that yeah. you were having, we just thought yeah. it was ties. To me, appearance is everything. I really don't care about food, I don't care about flowers. The only weak spot to me is the makeup. Overall, we just, I don't know, I think they did like it, but we missed the makeup. And we all knew that makeup is a big part of Pete's life. But we took the gamble, and we're not sure, too sure if it. It will pay off. Damon's team finally make it back, though half an hour late. You're late, but that, that, that's a bad mark against you, but okay then. We should go through all the things. Yeah. Why don't you explain about the flowers? Yeah, we got um, £1.50 a rose. We got quite a, a really good deal on those. Ooh, well done. I know. Also picked up your robes as well. Oh, brilliant. From hell. Ooh. And I'm Pete. Pete is not Peter. Oh. The gift for Michael. Yeah. We wanted to get something that looked classy. No, that's absolutely I've got to tell you, that's really, really lovely. <laughs> we, got, we got a third off that one. Yeah. A third off? Yeah. Yes. Wow. That's, that's yeah. quite good. This looks very intriguing, yeah, just, what is it? This is your foundation. The way I always test makeup is if it can cover a tattoo. That's really great. Oh, yeah, and I've, never really used, well. I've never used these oh, products really? before. You obviously wanted vanilla scented candles. Yeah, that's so, great. Yeah, we just got you these two as a pair. You know, do they, do just, they? They smell lovely. They smell gorgeous. Oh, they do, yeah. yeah. You did great. Thank you. Really, really, really good. good. Um, Pete adored the makeup, which was bliss, you know. Um, the flowers were good, they liked the candles. I mean, there really wasn't anything they could really criticise. They, they mentioned the timekeeping. But what does Pete really think? It's Look, goodness. I put it on, it covered the butterfly two minutes later. That's drag rot makeup. I couldn't go out anywhere in that because I'd be au naturel in ten minutes. Dog muck with ice and sugar on. Yes. But we said they were nice, so we were really two-faced. We should have thrown them at them. Okay, congratulations everybody, it was really, really close. So, Rob, how did your team do? Well, I suppose the biggest disappointment for me, given that this was a challenge about time management and organizing, was that you were 28 minutes late. Okay, Donna, how did yours go? Okay, well, we had Ian as team leader. Uh, he was very calm. You were dealing but, with the bitches know, of Eastwick. We did get back with five minutes to spare, which was great, but on the negative side, we only came back with four out of five. By your own admission, you're not someone who's very good with time. But I've earned the right not to be good with time. Exactly. I've been in this yeah. stinking pit call showbiz for over 30 years, and I don't give a hoot who waits for me. Yeah, but the people who work with you, they've got to be good with time. Well... If it's time management, I'm going to have to say you lost that task. Don't start crying about it or anything. So, you've won. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> With Pete's decision final, it's Damon, Rhea, Denise or SJ that will face elimination. 
who will not become Pete's PA. It's about taking each other out. And it's hard. It's a really, really tough job. You've got to grow yourself a big pair of balls. I didn't want to come across as a big old bitch in the car. There was any room for one big old bitch in this, and that's me. Get rid of all the fucking bitches. Send them right out the fucking door. Goodbye. And don't forget that Pete's PA returns next Monday at 10pm back over on Living. Back to Living 2 and tonight our kid fest that is etc. is on the way next. If you're feeling naughty, you the won't want to miss it, road. trust me. I have packed my bag. Um, unlike the girls, I've found out haven't packed their bags. But you know what? I'm prepared, like a good PA should be. Two out of three of the girls will not be on my Christmas card list. Um, I didn't take a big role yesterday. Um, but sometimes it is good to be, you know, there as a supportive role. That's what a good PA knows when to step back and when to come forward. I was told last night by Denise that she's vying for me to go. But I did tell Damon that. So yeah, I'm, I can only go on that. And I could be, I could have egg on my face by the end of today and I could be packing my bags and going. I can sack with a lot of the bitches. In all fairness, get rid of all the fucking bitches. Send them right out the fucking door. Goodbye. Now it's time for Pete Burns, Rob Young and Donna Cooling to decide which one of the candidates will not become Pete's PA. Hi everyone, now it's time to find out which one of you has not got what it takes to be my PA and that person will have to leave the house immediately. As you probably all know, I'm very, very disorganised and I have no sense of time. So I'm looking for a PA that can keep me running on time, keep track of my finances and get me whatever I want before I even know I want it. This week's task was about organisational skills and time management. You were given a list of items to purchase and get them back to me within three hours. Donna, how did your team get on? Well, Ian was team leader. He was very calm in a carload of crazy women. He tried to keep to his structure. Um, Natalie was excited to be in the West End and seeing stores. Um, Nikki was very assertive, but possibly borderline, a bit pushy. Shelley was trying to do a lot of phone, phone stuff in the car. They didn't bring the makeup back, but they wanted to get back in time because it was a time management challenge. Go on, Rob. How did your team do? Well, the team that I was observing, Damon was in charge, and I was a little bit disappointed because, you know, we've been drumming into you that this was about time management, and you were nearly half an hour late so even though they got all of the five items they didn't get it to you on time so as a team you please with yourself yes. we pull together yes right. certainly. congratulations to the winning team you can now leave the room you're safe now i've got to hear in butt clenching detail how you feel the task went and why you feel it went wrong from each of you individually so, Denise, step forward and give it to me. Um, I think that the, the task went well because we worked very well together. Um, and I think we, we, um, we weakened because we didn't um, concentrate fully on keeping to time. That's where we sort of all let each other down. Was somebody taking note of the time throughout the task? Whose job was that? Um, I was giving a half an hour markers. So do you think it was SJ's fault because she was looking after the time? No, I wouldn't blame SJ solely, no. I mean, what would you blame? I have to say, on leadership skills then, Damon, I'm really sorry, but I want to stay and I do want to work. That's on. honest, don't be sorry, that's what it's about. You've got to be honest and say what you feel. Okay, Ria. Okay, um, I was a team leader the other day. I stepped up and took responsibility. And on that, sadly, I have to say the same. Sorry, Damon. Okay, SJ. Damon and I have got very close, it's a very difficult thing, but I, and I don't want to say it. It's a really, really tough job, and you've no. got to grow yourself a big pair of balls. I'm not a weak person, no. Damon. Okay, well done. Damon. Okay, the time management was of the utmost importance with us to, um, on the task. We didn't monitor, the, as a team, we didn't monitor the, the time. I mean, Rhea was kind of back seat. She might be playing a safe card by taking a step back so she couldn't be so involved in, in perhaps in a losing team again. Rhea was in charge of the map and where you were going. Surely you can't take a back seat. You need to be in the front seat because you've got to tell people where you're going. And I, I believe I did that the whole way through. I checked with everybody the whole time. I was but like, you've just said that she took a back I mean, seat. That, that was her role, that's what she did. And then that, that, was all, that was kind of all she did. SJ, do you think that Rhea 
took on that proactive logistical role? Well, um, I have to say that when it came down to being in London, I think Rhea was quite nervous. And yes, I did have to give her quite a big hand. But you still ended up being half an hour late, so is it your fault? But I didn't want to come across as a big old bitch in the car. Well, there's any room for one big old bitch in this, and that's me. I have to say, from a personal point of view, I still find you a little bit overbearing. So some of the ways that you deliver sentences, so you'll say, you know, it's only my opinion. It's almost like uh, you're saying, you know, it's only my opinion, but actually I, I think I'm better than the rest of you. Well, that's not how I am. Okay, we're kind of heading off now. We've got to deliberate. Um, somebody's going to be going home today. So, can you please now leave the room? It's not about self-promotion at the moment. It's about taking each other out. And it's hard. It's horrible. It's not very nice at all. Well, Denise is safe. Wouldn't you agree? I think so. She was very strong. Yeah. Um, I can't fault her in that challenge. So we've got the other three to pick through, really. Rhea keeps... Well, she's lost three challenges now. Well, exactly. That's three. It's kind of bad, isn't it? It's, it's outrageous, yeah. To her credit, she is very calm, under pressure. She doesn't get all emotional. Some of the others, you know, you ask them a question and they're bursting into tears at the drop of a hat. You don't get any of that rubbish from Rhea. Um, I mean, what about Damon? I think, you know, he was the leader of the team, but I didn't see any leadership from him. He was invisible, wallpaper, background. I know, but he's very good for group morale. He does keep everybody together. Everybody likes him. He's a very likable person. He took that on the chin. He did well. completely, yeah. He doesn't take it all personally, which is great in an assistant. And I think he's out there now thinking he's definitely going to go. But I think SJ welling up. I mean, you, you think she's the kind of person who you ask her to make a cup of tea and she'll be in tears. Yeah. That worries me because I'm going to have to carry a big bag full of Kleenex around. Yeah. No, I mean, she's extremely loyal. You could see what a connection she has with Damon and she, you know, she didn't want to say his name. So her loyalty is great. Loyalty is very, very important. I have to say, she is like a Rottweiler. She is, you know, dogged determination, you know, sort of really gritty. She really persists. Mm. She will really work hard. So that's mm. a real plus for her. For me, there are three people. Each of them could go. And at the end of the day, it's, <laughs> I don't envy your decision. Yeah. No, it's a really difficult one again, and it's getting more difficult and more difficult and more difficult. <sighs> On this CV is the name of the person that's not going to be my PA. Denise, you've been a bit low profile for the past couple of weeks. But these last tasks, you've really pushed yourself forward and you've shown me what a real go-getter you can be. And I'd really like to see more of that. Well done. Rhea, three times you've been on a losing team and that doesn't thrill me. I think you're getting a bit complacent. I think you've got a lot of potential, you can do well, but it's not good enough. If you want to stay, you've really got to pull your knickers up, girl. SJ, you've performed really well in the tasks that you've taken part in, but you're kind of really too up and down, a bit emotionally unstable. That's really not a good qualification for my PA. Damon, it's pretty obvious you're doing something right, as you've been leader of a winning team a couple of times. But this time, you're a backseat driver, and I'm looking for somebody who can take charge of a situation. You're not going to be my PA. Okay, thank you for the experience. I've learned a lot. Can you now leave the house? I came in here for the experience, to be able to meet Pete and make my own judgments on him. And you know what? He's an amazing guy. I'm going to leave here with my head held high and with dignity and integrity. You know, and I met a lot of great people. Well done. It's a really, really tough one and thanks for coming through. It's gonna to get tougher, and you're gonna to have to try a little bit harder, but keep on doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can now leave the room. So with Rhea eliminated, only seven candidates remain, who will become Pete's PA. 
next time on Pete's PA. SJ gets emotional. And there's no job in the world that's worth it. No oh, job in the world. Pete feels let down. Some of you really sold me out for 40 pieces of silver. Just swallow me up and die. And Natalie learns a lesson from the pros. What I would say to that is that immediately cut me off as aggressive. And if you want to deal with me again in future, yeah. do you think we're going to have a good rapport? We'll be right back.